light. Today we've got the new Ace Beam K40M. Uh, we're going to be taking a look out here, but really quick, if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe link to follow me on YouTube here. Uh, this link right up here will uh, help you follow me on Facebook. And when the review is finished completely, I'll be putting the link to the full review uh, in the description below. That'll have the beam shots, runtime graphs, uh, a lot of pictures, uh, all that great stuff. So be sure to check that out. So the uh, K40M is Ace Beam's newest light. It's a large light. As you can see here, it comes in a large box um, with the nice buckle and handle there and I haven't even taken the plastic off the handle yet so I'm gonna open it up and uh, pat it on the inside it comes with the instruction manual uh, which is nice to have but not too necessary for it because of how simple the slide is a uh, nice warranty card here kind of fancy on the the plastic kind of credit card sized it comes with a couple accessories here is the extra o-rings and an extra tail boot cover and it also comes with a lanyard. So that's in that bag. Um, and the last accessory is the holster that comes in the holster, which makes sense with how much room there is here. The holster is just standard but large, as you can tell. And the light just goes in there head down. It's got the Ace Beam logo right there. And on the back, you can Velcro, it's got a Velcro and button closure that you can use right there. So that's how that works. I'll go ahead and try to remove the box without bumping my camera around here with how large it is. Alright. So the K40M uses the new Cree MTG2 emitter. The MTG2 is an upgrade from the old MTG. It's not quite as efficient as the XML, which is pretty popular, but it can reach higher brightnesses. So it's popular for these high output lights because uh, you can get, uh, I believe the uh, K40M here, it claims maximum of 3,000 lumens. And I believe it, I haven't tested it yet, but it's very bright. So you can see the emitter down in there. You can tell it's kind of uh, larger than uh, the XML emitters, if you're familiar with uh, high quality flashlights, uh, modern ones. You can also see it's in a, a very large and smooth reflector to maximize the throw capabilities. And it's set pretty deep down in there. It's about this far in. It's about level with the control ring is where the emitter is. So that's that. You can see it's got lots of uh, grooves here in the head. These are heat dissipation fins. It's important for these high output lights to be able to move heat out away from the emitter and into the air around it. And increasing the surface area of the head helps a lot with that. Um, the control ring here is the main way of controlling light, and we'll get more detail of that later. But you can see there's uh, grooves cut into it to make it easier to grip, and it's got the arrow on it to indicate what mode you're in, and the labeling here to show you the modes available and that just rotates around and stops at either end. It's got a really a really nice feel to it. It uh, feels uh, takes enough force to turn it that it's not going to turn by accident but it feels very smooth and kind of clicks into position at each place so a pretty satisfying click there so it just feels nice to use. The body has a little bit of knurling on it here that's fairly rough gives you a pretty good grip. You can see the Ace Beam logo right there and the website and the K40M model number right there and on the tail here, the switch is completely recessed within the, the protrusion of the tail, so you can do a very stable tail stand there. It does mean, because uh, it's not crenellated, you kind of have to have your hand near the end in order for your thumb to be able to reach down around there, even if you've got bigger uh, hands like mine, if you want to carry it in the overhand grip. But because it has the standby mode, up in front, it's easy to just switch it to standby and you don't have to go to the overhand grip. You can keep it in the underhand grip. You can go to standby and the light will be off while you're using it. And so you don't have to use the switch too often. Uh, we'll go ahead and go open it up and take a look on the inside here. Thread action is pretty smooth, which I always appreciate. You can see it has the O-ring right there to keep water from getting inside the light. And the uh, threads here are triangle cut and they are knurled, so they should last fairly well, fairly long. You can see inside the head it's got a spring here to make a positive connection with the uh, battery carrier. It seems to me, and I'll confirm this in the full review, but it seems to me like this battery carrier is made so it can be inserted either direction. So there's no uh, identifying marks in either way, although you have to uh, insert the batteries in the correct direction. So, And those are clearly marked, and it does follow the convention with the negative end of the battery going to the, the spring. Um, so I'll go ahead and pop a few batteries in there. 
And uh, while I do, I'll mention the, uh, some of the benefits of using a battery carrier versus having it uh, just drilled into slot or battery slip into slots to so drilled in a solid body. The battery carrier is a lot heavier, or excuse me, a lot lighter than if it was a solid body. And you also have the advantage of um, if you have a spare battery carrier, you can have that preloaded if you like. Um, it, although the disadvantages are there, uh, it tend to be not quite as sturdy as if it was just milled in, obviously. But the biggest advantage is the weight, it makes it a lot lighter. So, got that inserted. We'll screw it back down. All right, here we go. So um, I will go ahead and turn on the light. There it is. Now it looks very blue here uh, because of the white balance of my camera. To see the real tint, you can stick around for the outdoor portion. It'll be better out there. And also you can check out the beam shots in the full review. This uh, MTG emitter, excuse me, MTG2 emitter has a pretty neutral tint. Uh, to my eyes, so and I'll be measuring that on the spectrometer as well. So you can see I'm adjusting the brightness by turning this ring. So I'm going to take it all the way up. Uh, here's standby. If I turn it to the right of standby, I have the strobe as marked, and it seems to be a sort of variable speed strobe, which is supposed to be more disorienting than if uh, it had a constant speed. Supposedly, people can't get used to that as fast if it uh, has the variable speed, and that's at the maximum brightness and then it has a standby portion and then when I turn it to the left of standby I'm in the max brightness here and you can't really see the beam pattern at all because it's overloading my camera that's how bright it is I'm gonna start turning it down I believe there's six positions so here you can see the beam pattern pretty well you can see it's a very uh, tightly focused spot here and uh, then a quick drop off into the spill so this uh, is gonna have a pretty good throw and I believe they claim 500 meters. I'll be measuring that also. And then the spill itself even isn't very wide. So this is a, mostly a throwing based light, high power thrower. And then all the way down to the minimum brightness here. So that's that. And then you can take a look at the emitter while it's lit up. It looks kind of fun there. And you can see the MTG2 emitter is very large and very bright. So this is the operation of uh, the ACE beam K40M, and if you stick around for just a second, we'll take it outside and give it a shot in the dark. Hello and welcome to Review the Light. Today we're taking a look at the uh, Ace Beam K40M, as you know. Uh, we've got it out here in a big field, and we actually have a, a bit of a fun surprise uh, tonight. Oh, that's a strobe mode. So, you'll notice uh, if I can find it. There we go. And if it'll focus over there, you see we've got a deer hanging out down there. Um, I will try and get my camera to focus a bit better. You can bear with me for just a moment. There it is. Let's see if we can get the camera focus. You can see we've got his attention, or her attention. But um, yeah, that deer is pretty far away. I'll take a look at the distance on Google Maps later and try and post that to an annotation. But um, with my eyes, I can see uh, obviously the, uh, the deer's eyes glowing real well over there. And the body even, um, when it points its eyes away, is very obvious uh, whether it's moving or not. So um, this is kind of a, a fun surprise. You don't get to see this in my reviews too often. But now uh, we got a little wildlife action, so that's exciting. And uh, it's probably heard me talking now. Don't worry, deer. It's all good things. Um, Alright, so anyway, I'll continue with the review. Sorry about the digression there. I'm going to extract myself from the camera. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, Ace Beam K40M, and as I said, uh, we've got it out here in a big field. Um, I am, I've got it on high mode right now. I'm going to have to excuse my dog. He might try and run out there after the deer. He just noticed it. Um, so, this is the high mode here, and I'll just go ahead and quickly I'll zoom out for you and I'll cycle through the rest of the modes. So this is, uh, that was level six is what they call that, the highest mode. And this is five, four, three, two, one. And one, uh, it's very dim here. I've got it on the board up close. And uh, to my eyes, I can see more than just a spot on my uh, screen. I'm just seeing the spot. The spill is still easily visible uh, to my eyes here, but... Uh, there you go. So this is what the beam pattern looks like outside. You can see it does have that well-defined spot, but with a larger emitter, even with the huge head, the uh, throw is not um, 
as extreme as it, as it possibly could be because the MTG2 emitter is pretty large. So it is a very good thrower as you saw that deer way off in the distance, um, but the beam is still a little bit uh, soft around the edge as the hotspot is, and there's still some good spill. Um, so I'll cycle back up here and uh, we'll get you a look at that water tower that's off in the distance. You can see it's uh, possible to read what's on it there, the big number five. If there were any other writing on it, I could probably get a better look at that, but that's all it says. Um, and to my eyes, I can I can see that water tower real well, and also the trees behind it. I'm not sure if those are going to show up on your computer screen or not. It just depends on probably what your brightness is set at and how bright I can get it in the post processing here. But I can see uh, the, the general shape of the trees. You can't really see if there's anything in those trees or not back out there, but here's a set of closer trees that I will point it at. And these trees that you're looking at now, I can tell, uh, I could tell if there, if there's anything uh, sitting in those branches there, for instance. Um, they are empty right now, but I, I'd be able to see if there was anything there. And here's some even closer trees, so you can see the way the beam plays across the trees there. And here's a, a very close tree. As you can see, it's got, the MTG emitter does have that nice neutral sort of beam, and uh, the light is warming up, so I've shifted it down a, a notch. And you can tell even on the second notch, it's still quite a lot of light to put out as I'm looking around here. So, this is the uh, Ace Beam K40M, and I'll, I'll do the strobe mode really quick for you. You can see the, the variable rate. But yeah, so this is, this is the Ace Beam K40M, and it's performance outdoors. So again, make sure if you haven't yet, uh, go ahead and click the link in the top right to subscribe to my channel and the top left to follow me on Facebook and uh, check the description below. Uh, when the full review is completed, that's where you will see the link to the full review with all of the runtime information, beam shots, all that great stuff. So thanks for joining us.